trademark esports in the very first round. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so that's how they've gotten to where they are now. Yeah, I, I have no idea where Fang came from, how they managed to get game off of TDM, but a lot of respect to them for doing it. Uh, of course, now they're back to gold, unfortunately, but, you know, maybe we'll see more of them in the future. Oh, well, hey, you know, that's got to boost your ego quite a bit, knowing that you've taken a game off of, arguably, again, the best team out there, I mean, in yeah. trademark esports overall, so <laughs> that's got to be very exciting. Um, oh. Ophelia, the first lock, Master of Arms, War Beast. How about that, Emperor? War Beast going to be locked up here. Uh, you know, I'm a fan. Uh, <laughs> Haven't seen too much of him lately. I mean, I felt for a while he was being picked up and actually being highly prioritized, and mm -hmm. uh, he's sort of fallen off the radar again. Uh, he is locked up here, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Jacole from We Are Spies over there. I remember back when I was playing War Beast all the time, man, that guy used to message me, uh, you know, almost every day, tell me about new, like, pulling strats, new, new War Beast strats yeah. to optimize your farm, and he'd be analyzing all of my games and whispering to me about <laughs> everything, and thought he was just some random public player at the time, but now we look here, see, a year later, he's playing on a diamond team, he's doing very well for himself, and teams oftentimes ban Warbies from him. Yeah, you know, we I, I do remember, you know, <laughs> mentioning that in the past, when we've cast 007, uh, Jacole plays a fantastic Warbies that we've seen, and uh, it's kind of an interesting storyline there, you know, <laughs> the fact that uh, kind of uh, you've been his mentor, I guess you could say, uh, when it comes down to it, so... Interested to see if he is eventually picked up here from uh, We Are Spy specifically, maybe even TT Esports, you never know. Um, as far as the overall lock pool goes, Torturer, Aluna, and then Parasite are going to be able to finish things off. And then the first band coming out with a Jiraziah so far. So, very strong lock pool. Uh, you do got the Parasite and Ophelia in there as well as, of course, the Warbies as far as jungle options. So, maybe makes it a little bit less possibility, but it's still there, of course. Yeah, I mean, I still could very well expect to see it just because of how well Jacole plays it. Mm -hmm. um, I've barely seen it lose, honestly, when he runs it. <laughs> he just does a fantastic job with it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the thing that I do like most is seeing the Keeper of the Forest and the Tempest both band out. Usually it makes for more interesting games. Yeah. Uh, I like seeing the Master and the Ophelia both locked because it makes it a lot harder to get that combination, but also applies a lot of pressure to uh, 007 where if TTS grabs Ophelia. Mm -hmm. If they do it, uh, they're more pressured to sort of have to take that Master pick. Not the biggest deal in the world considering how versatile his laning is, though. Yeah. Yeah, the Master of Arms, of course. I mean, it seems like not only can he, seems like he can lane in so many ways, but again, can play out of the support or that carry option. So, uh, again, you see some chat going, chat going back and forth. These two teams, once again, know each other fairly well, and apparently uh, that wretched hag ban is because of the good old Cakes over there. Cakes let them know that they banned Pebbles, though, because of Moravis. Uh, Moon Queen Pharaoh are going to be the follow-up bans, and now one more ban to go coming up from Dirty Mobs here. Of course, the captain of 007. <clears throat> we'll see what we finish things off with and then move into the uh, picking stage. But, <clears throat> yeah, we again, the, the Pharaoh, the Rally, actually going to finish things off here. So Deadwood is still left on the board, actually. That's a, it's a hero that's definitely standing out to me. Yeah, in this case. And, you know, they have first pick, and Deadwood Master <laughs> uh, often picked up a lot, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see them actually prioritize the Master first pick out of this lock pool, mm -hmm. uh, given that there's a lot of other jungling options besides Ophelia. Yeah. So, uh, again, yeah, Deadwood, uh, not, not the biggest surprise there at all. First pick coming out for TT Esports, now 007. See how they respond. And, and again, 007, not a team I, I've gotten the chance to really look at too much as far as their overall play style. Um, so I am kind of interested to see, you know, what they bring to the table as far as maybe some unique strategies. Um, teams like this tends to, tends to maybe happen sometimes. Teams that, you know, aren't necessarily competing at that top, top level, the Diamond Division every single week, week in and week out. You know, may, maybe bring some curveballs to the table, so... Interested again to see if we well, get I mean, that. Well, uh, a hero that stands out uh, very obviously would be the, the engineer still in the pool right here. Mm -hmm. Have seen him passed up occasionally, but uh, not really anticipating to see that. Besides that, Bubbles is a very strong hero with War Beast as well. However, they're just going a totally <laughs> different route here. Uh, rocking out the pandemonium. I mean, you can't call that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're looking at, uh, unless you're looking at absolute legends, I think they're the only team really known on the radar for using Pandemonium. So, far. oh yeah, that and really, really old school fanatic MSI. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's you know it's a whole different era now. It's yeah. uh, <clears throat> a little yeah, bit different. It's true though, they used to run that Panda tri lane all the time. Mm-hmm. I think that was first. Bot, aka Fly, that used yep. to play back then. Yeah, that was one of the first. That and then the Gladiator, and then then the uh, Mal I think Malakin. Malakin a little time, bit, so. yeah. Yep, that was old school there, man. Strength carry, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
No. <laughs> Is he? Sandrace? No. I mean, I would be a huge fan. Uh, sadly, they're not doing it. I know Tralfendor actually likes to play that War Beast a lot, too. Uh, it's still an option later on. I mean, I, I do... I was expecting them to pick Master of Arms. Mm -hmm. uh, now, let me try to think here. Now there's the... Hmm. I mean, th th they could still run it if they are going to run it as support. Otherwise, you're going to see Bubbles taking up one of the lanes, most likely a suicide. I think and they're going to go Ophelia. Farm another and Hammerstorm taking up the priority farm and another as well. So yeah. If they do pick that master, it's probably going to be running more of a support role, which I've actually seen TTS do quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I could definitely see the Aluna or the Torture, though, in that role. What the hey, hell is no, going on? Uh, that's a scout. What? And, and uh, here we go. <laughs> this is what I was saying. I mean, I, when I said it, I didn't realize it was going to be that crazy. Holy crap. Pandemonium and then do a scout. You know, I will. Okay, here's the thing. I will say, I've heard of this strategy, apparently, of a scout being a decent suicide, actually. Believe yeah. it or not. So, I kind of wonder if maybe that's where this is going, perhaps, but we'll see. What a, what a funky lineup, man. What a funky <laughs> first three Pandemonium picks. Pandemonium scout. I would say, Master would have been cool, but being forced to be run as a support, I do like the fact that they didn't grab him first out of the lock pool. Uh, Ophelia just has... Just, works very well with what they're trying to accomplish, and I think it works very well against the War Beast as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, solid across the board. Wow. They, You know, they get to run the, the Panda Master of Arms lane over there that we've seen a lot lately where Pandemonium's run. Yeah. It almost seems to be the go-to Panda lane at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so with the with the way things are shaping up, it looks like we'll probably see something like that Plague Rider Suicide, you know, Warby's Jungle, Pandemonium MOA Middle, and then Scout Short Lane Farm. So, okay. Now I like to root for the underdog, Breaky. Uh, I think you know that about me. I always root for the underdog. Doesn't matter who my favorite team is. I'm always rooting for the underdog underneath. But uh, I'm looking at the lineups here, and I like <laughs> oddball lineups too. I like unique heroes, but there's just so many of them coming out at once here from Hellborn, and yeah. What I don't like to see is too many right-click heroes on the same team. Mm -hmm. Like, I often gave that criticism to, say, when we saw Warbeast plus Tremble. And, uh, not Warbeast, Wild Soul plus Tremble being run by... Oh, who was it? That was uh, actually Team Excellent. Team Excellent with Pew That's right. and yeah. those guys, Fabelli. And, you know, I was like, okay, if uh, early pressure starts happening, what are they going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, Warbeast is a right-click hero, but... With that ultimate, with those wolves, he, he can't provide a lot of damage early, so not as useless, so to speak, as some of those other right-click heroes before he gets farm. Yeah. But still, you know, you look at him and Scout, and, and the panda can be pretty difficult to land his spells off, and it it worries me a bit, man, when it comes to their <laughs> team fight. I feel like if they can play it well, maybe run some counter ganks, okay, but I feel like they're very vulnerable to the train this game, and... Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be pretty hard to do lane control outside of maybe their Panda Master lane. Yeah. yeah. I will say Scout's Eye, uh, the the, uh, the electric eye is a very powerful tool, and it almost even uh, something you tend to maybe forget a lot of time because we just never see a Scout. But, I mean, that that's an awesome AoE silence ability that, that the eye brings. I mean, it starts at three seconds all the way up to six seconds in that good radius. So, and, um, yeah. And it works through shrunken heads. And it's physical, yeah. So it goes through the shrunken heads yeah. and... That's definitely something. So, like, you know, I've talked about it in the past. Obviously, they're not facing like a Tempest, but you could put an electric guy down, and then if a Tempest, you know, ulti is like in the vicinity of it, you just use it even if he has a shrunken head and it'll still silence him. So, um, kind of ideas like that. But yeah, so again, looking forward to seeing it, which I'm sure we will see plenty of that electric guy come out. I will, I will also say Diglett here playing the scout, he is actually a pretty damn good farmer, as we've both seen in the stats uh, respect. And in fact, I was able to pull up the stats right here. He he's farmed actually 451 gold per minute basically per game here throughout Haunt, all of Haunt Tour. Now, uh, sure, I mean this again. This is a team that has bounced back and forth between the Gold and Diamond division, uh, so you know maybe a little bit skewed in that sense. But at the same time, from what I've seen as well, I mean he is definitely a very very good farming player. So, uh, yeah, he had some mutual friends. I've TMM'd with him before too, even before I saw him on the competitive scene. And then uh, his farm was always very very noteworthy. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to criticize him for avoiding team fights sometimes in, in favor of farming, but he'd always carry in the end with his farm. Yeah, uh, definitely capable of hitting those huge numbers, and uh, I'm very curious to see how he's going to work in scout with this team. Uh, also, going to keep an eye on Jacole playing this war beast. This is his power hero. 
You know, it's it's kind of funny with the freeze frame. It almost looks like Scout's riding on the hell hound. <laughs> They're like, two, let's go to the river. <laughs> so sad. Uh, no, but with that said, though, he is using the ultimate Scout avatar. And I, I've actually tested this thing out. It's pretty badass when you build a, you know, you get... Obviously, from from starting with your boots and certain items. I mean, I think when you get like a codex, a, we probably won't say codex here, but you get like a pulse okay. candle like on your shoulder. It's yes. pretty badass. So, man, I miss I miss beta days when codex scout was just the thing to do. <laughs> uh, well, it changed a little. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that was fun. Mm. <laughs> well, probably no pulse cannon, as you said. He's playing that farmer role, so mm -hmm. not playing like a suicide or anything funky. So probably just didn't see a very conventional item build from him. Uh, that being said, you know, item pickup we've been seeing more on scouts lately. Yeah. The portal key. Really? Well, not early on, but yeah, after things like a runed axe and trying to be seen portal key a lot to not only follow up on the snipe, but also to get the nice bling silence off and then, yeah, follow up chase through. We've actually seen it quite a bit lately on. Interesting. I feel like almost every notable scout that I've I, seen. Uh, I, I like how you're saying quite a bit lately when we've never seen any competitive play well, lately. But, of course, yeah. yeah. I feel like, okay, at the at the Han 3.0 launch land, at, uh, I, I've seen it in some Sound Blaster games, and it, I, I saw it used against, I, I thought it was TDM, and it wasn't a, a casted match, but I watched the replay. Hmm. It was against some top team, and I, it was either 007 or some other group, maybe Absolute Legends. Uh, playing it, but they ran scout as well, and it went very late game, and they almost won. Uh, didn't quite pull through, but yeah, there was a mm -hmm. portal key scout in that as well. Hmm. So, it. we'll see. We'll see what Diglett decides to go here, and you know something else. Actually, I just realized a pandemonium skin, man. That's kind of threw me off guard a little bit, but uh, he's using uh, one of the uh, alternate skins. Why tiger monium? The tiger, yeah. Badass. Look at that stance, man. Yeah. It's like I, uh, I will say, I've never seen a successful game out of the tiger monium yet. Uh, <laughs> I feel like every time someone picks him and uses that skin in, in a TMM, I just see them go zero and seven. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, you're cursing you rookie curse here. Like your skin, this game. You're cursing rookie. That's what you just did. Well, you know, it, the curse is already out there. I'm just <laughs> bringing light to it, so hopefully, so hopefully someone breaks. Here. All right. Yeah, and again, this is why I was actually really intrigued to cast this series when I, when I was looking at the loser bracket matchups. Um, I mean, sure, TD Esports is probably the favorite team in the end, but uh, again, in cases like this, I've heard and we've seen a couple of times, 007 specific, it's almost like they're they're absolute legends, like where they're not afraid to go a little bit oddball. They're not afraid to try try different things, and clearly, clearly, we get that here in game number one. So, all right, obviously, we've gone to the pause now, and the landing phase is actually starting a little bit interesting. Uh, Deadwood is of course short bottom, not the crazy scenario. Bubbles is actually going to be playing the mid, and they decide to go Hammerstorm Aluna top actually. Uh, to put that pressure on that scout, you know, figuring especially with that passive jungler and war beast wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world. So, uh, seems like TT Esports actually laying this pretty well here. Yeah, uh, Jacole only having one mod potion in the enemy woods. Hopefully, he'll be okay. Uh, might screw with Ophelia a little bit. I mean, not really, though. She has another hard camp on the far left side to deal with, not really slowing down her farm at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I feel like no one's up there to take advantage of the fact that they can't really ward the pool against the scout. Oh, that's true. Very true. That's one major part about the electric eye early on is that, you know, you sort of get it and that just allows you to... Oh, look, he has no creep. Uh, Trophmodor doesn't, so... Huh. Unless he takes over a mana burner, he's just going to try to click out this war beast. Uh, he, you know, those level 2 wolves do such a better job, though, of harassing enemy heroes out. Mm. Uh, it's a shame he's not level 3 yet, because that would just do wonders for him right now. Uh, still, he gets making it work. Mana potion knocked off right there, unfortunately. He's going to go for the 2-minute rune. It is going to be haste bottom. Jacol! Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought he was going for it. <laughs> never mind. He's just going to kind of run on by. Maybe he spotted it, and hoping that his team will go there, but... Yeah, I think that was just... They kind of know it's there, right? I mean... I don't think so. They're not I heading there. So. I mean... It was a haste rune too. It was not like it was, you know. Well, honestly, any rune in that game, yeah, you should you should at least spot it out and protect it at the very least. But if not, pick it up yourself. If anything, that would have helped him get to the other jungle that much faster. <laughs> the haste rune. So, yeah, a little bit of an unfortunate misplay there. Uh, coming out, you do see Scout going towards the top rune. He's currently in the invis uh, in that vanish form, scouting things out. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but... Ooh, nice juke by Cakes, man. That was huge. That was huge. 
I'm actually looking at the middle action. Bubbles is actually going to be fine. But yeah, Cakes going through the jungle right here, trying to get away from Ophelia and Deadwood. Rotten Grasp and Tap, a nice sidestep right there from Cakes. And it looks like Cakes in the end will be more than fine. The Haitian is still there, actually, but he's not going. <laughs> I was hoping he would still go. No one wants he needs it, to be huh? careful, though. Oh, we ran back in. The Skeleton King coming in with the net. No, he's going to go back and forth. Back and forth. Ooh, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Look where the creeps are, man. Yeah. Uh, great play. If only, oh, grab, grab the haste and get back to the lane. Oh, uh, bottled up by Master. There you go. You know, if only he kept going, he would have had that haste run. He would have been behind the tower. He wouldn't be missing out on, like, six creeps of experience mm -hmm. here. Um, and potential gold. That really, really sucks. Uh, you know, imagine giving Plague an ability to die at six creeps or something. That's basically what just happened to him. Uh, <laughs> Master. No, really. Uh, he did an insanely good job juking. Uh, mm -hmm. He should have... I thought for sure he was giving up first blood to this Deadwood, Ophelia. Uh, did an insanely good job juking in the woods, but... Yeah, that does hurt him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, well played. Like I said, I happened to be watching the middle action while that was taking place, but take your word for it, definitely. And ultimately staying alive at the very least, so... Uh, that, that's kind of the good news there. But overall, Deadwood, speaking of his farm, he is now 16-4. and four. Um, He is, uh, you know, looking pretty good. But actually, okay, Hammerstorm's the one that's really doing well. Of course, uh, Cheese Helmet here, a.k.a. Heimer, playing the Hammerstorm. 25-14 and 14 currently. I think that 26-14 and 14 is he uh, kills off the Hell Cannon right there. So Hammerstorm, to say the least, having a very good time. Scout Diglett doing his best to kind of recover a little bit. He's now 9-4, and four, getting a couple of creep kills here and there. Of course, uh... You know, it's, it is a difficult lane situation for him with the Aluna Hammerstorm. So at least staying alive again is going to be the key there. And then it kind of makes you wonder what kind of investment in Revs specifically we should expect to see here from uh, the Legion team. Le Revs are dust for that matter here in the laning phase. We're going to yeah, pick those I mean, up early on. Oh, there's the stun, the power throw on top yep. of the stun from Aluna. Not going to be enough for the kill, though. This guy will be fine. Yeah. He's got to be careful now, though. I mean... Hammerstorm has more than enough for another stun. Honestly, he has another two stuns because he has those uh, steam boots. Jeez, Plague so. Rider nearly died. <laughs> Going yeah, back to base uh, right there. You know, it's really frustrating, too. They have this really, really powerful lane of Pandemonium plus Master of Arms, and they can't even utilize it. Mm hmm. Because those stupid bubbles just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, top lane. Scout does oh. get bloodlusted there. I See, wish I didn't catch it, but. Yeah, it's, it was just the Hammerstorm stun, I'm sure, into the power throw and just mm -hmm. having enough damage. We saw he only had treaters. He was still low health. I mean, <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's looking like a rough I, start here for 007. Yeah, I, I understand why they sent the uh, War Beast down uh, to the enemy woods. This is unfortunate because they could have taken advantage of that pull spot. They would have been a lot better off having it. Uh, Scout would have gotten better farm, and just the laning phase in general would have mm -hmm. gone smoother. But, you know, it's hard to make those predictions unless you're maybe scouting with the wolves at the start to see where they're doing. Yeah. And, yeah, that's why I said also going back to TT Esports and their decision on how to lane this. I mean, again, it seems like they, they pretty much maximized their efficiency, honestly. The the bubbles made yeah. sending the Hammerstorm Aluna top, it just made so much sense, really. And uh, oh. it's been working here, so. Plague Rider. Yeah, play right at the bottom he lane. Boots, man. He no doesn't fucking have boots. punch. He's, he's screwed. He's screwed. There's the log. Can he get away? No, the wrong grass comes out. There's the falcon punch. And Moravis will pick up the kill. You see Trophador and Affiliate coming in with the Minotaur Vulture Lord. Maybe going to apply a little bit of pressure on the tower right here. Uh, but we are looking at a 2 nothing hero kill start. Now, Pandemonium is having some pretty good farm here in the middle lane. So despite them not being able to take full advantage of this lane combo against Bubbles here, who actually is level 6 now, um, he has managed to, again, get some very good farm here. As it currently is 37 and 9, farming about 317 gold per minute. So the, it's, it's not like everything is going uh, poorly here for 007. Right. At least. Uh, well, he just spotted where the war was placed. And gonna get a quick counter down right there for good old buddy Warbeast to take out. Well, that's, that's one thing going well. And meanwhile, okay, see, Warbeast is still not level 6, man. Neither is Scout. That really is. Yeah. Really uses those level sixes. Really uh, slow start here this game. Marksman shot especially. I mean, on scout, it's a very powerful burst tool. You know, early on in the game especially, and uh, could take advantage of that. But trying uh, trying their best to get through there again. Hammerstorm is having free farm up here at the top lane. Obviously, the bottom tower was pushed right there. Uh, Moravis here on Deadwood. He's got the steam boots currently. I want to see. I thought he managed to just purchase something, but no, he has the steam boots and mana battery currently sitting on. Steam boots on bubbles. He got the steam boots on hammerstorm, who has another 1500 plus gold saved up now. Nuke that's 1600. So he's well on his way to his first item choice, which you know he's definitely gone that insanitarious route before the Sanitarius Elder Parasite. 
interested to see if maybe he goes for that again. Deadweight going in for the kill again on a plague rider. He will get it again. Rotten Grass lands, and the Falcon Punch is too easy. Bobbles in the meantime in the middle lane. The Pandemonium face smash coming out. Bobbles going to be locked down, and him and Master of Arms will finish him off. So finally a kill happening here for 007, specifically in this middle lane. As uh, Pandemonium also activated the double damage run after, so good kill for them in the middle at least. Yeah, uh... Well, Scott's not level 6, Warbeast is level 6 now. Plague Rider just having a really rough time down there. I mean, it all snowballed from when Trollop sort of edged him out of getting back into the lane. Those, like, six creeps died to the tower. He uh, wasn't able to pick up boots in time, so he got, you know, killed by the devil later. And now that the advantage is so high, it's just really hard for him to lane. He just needs his level 6 and go make something happen elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Cheese Helmet might be in a little bit of trouble. Master of Arms coming in, level 6 Warbeast. Marksman Shot is up. Gonna use it. No, we canceled right there. In comes the ulti Warbeast, though. Stun on a Master of Arms. No ports are coming in. The uh, Marksman Shot is not going off here. I was expecting that the whole time. He just was out of range, ultimately, I guess. I mean, oh, that's unfortunate. That was a kill if he was able to get that off there. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like for sure he would have been able to cast it. Did he not have mana? Or? He kept casting it, I thought. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Maybe that was it. Maybe he just wasn't close enough yeah. on the first cast. And he was just trying. Isn't it? Wait. I thought when you lock it, it doesn't... Like, you can't go I out of range. I thought it got buffed like that. Or is that, is, yeah. that, is that the other one? Is that for Flint Beast? I'm, no, I'm pretty sure. sure it's for him, didn't it? I thought so, but yeah, I'm not uh, sure. Or maybe I mean, not. Something was causing issues. I, I highly doubt it was him just misclicking constantly. I mean... So, well, wasn't able to get it off and uh, not able to get the kill. Moravis like, can't go in a Plague Rider. Every single time that cooldown's up, he's just diving Plague Rider. And Cakes is doing his darndest, but <laughs> he just says, fuck it, I'm done. I uh, can't blame him. Uh, yeah, it's uh, clearly having a difficult time and obviously uh, not getting the team support. So, uh, Ophelia is going to join in with a double Vulture Lord here. And Bubbles even joining the party. They're going to easily get a secondary tower. So TT Esports definitely off to a very strong start here. Ten minutes into this game, uh, we're going to see the gold lead after this tower. 5,200 gold lead. Hammerstorm does purchase his portal key there, by the way. And he is yeah. actually pointing to the middle lane now. So, Yeah, I will say I normally prefer the uh, the stat build for a Plague Rider Suicide. A lot of Suicides that ring the teacher is nice, but for a Plague Rider, I normally prefer to get like that, the Pretender's Crown, a bunch of uh, totems, and just uh, stat way the hell up. Uh, oh, Pandemonium in the middle lane, gonna flick right there to Hammerstorm, Cannonball, Sam Plague is coming out right there, going with the, the Q right there in the flurry, and gets the counter kill onto Warp, or excuse me, to Hammerstorm. Well played right there, Rookie, I thought for sure, you know, I was kind of questioning that a little bit right there, as far as uh, him looking to turn that around, but with the Plague you support, and the Master's Call came in as well, deep in the Master's Call, definitely helped save Pandemonium and helped turn that, so again, very good execution right there, and the four-man gank on a Pandemonium is unsuccessful as a result. In fact, it gets countered on. Again, this, this Pandemonium is continuing to have a very big impact here. 360 gold per minute now. Yeah, somehow the experience is pretty much the same between the two teams. <laughs> Despite go the lanes going horribly wrong for yeah. 007, they're, they're still holding in there. <clears throat> yeah, that's very true. I mean, it's basically identical at this point. And the goalie does, it was just at 5200 with a tower push, but now you look at it, it's about 3900. So, <clears throat> at least going down a little bit right here. More mm -hmm. in favor of... Uh, uh, 007. Warp and, and Warbeast is that passive jungler where just naturally as the game progresses, you know, he can expect his farm to raise more and more and uh, start pushing those towers himself. So despite this poor start, really, for 007, I still kind of feel like, I mean, it's definitely don't, don't uh, overlook it by any means because, again, the Pandemonium leading the way. Warbeast has got up that farm now up to about uh, 250 gold per minute. And Scouts, uh, you know, he is level 7 at least. His farm's still struggling, but... Look what they just picked up on two heroes for uh, Legion side. What's that? Portal, portal keys? keys? Yeah. Yeah. Deadwood. That, that, <laughs> I mean, it. that's when the pain's supposed to start for their lineup. True. And uh, you know, I talked about the Deadwood Ophelia combination a lot, just like a Pebbles Ophelia. You burst one down, and then even the other four heroes, they just cannot compete with the Ophelia heals. Mm -hmm. It makes pushing that easy. Yeah. Ghost Marchers are finished on Scout, so. There's a little bit more movement as a result of that. Of course, more damage. You should be careful right here. Hammerstorm. Again, he has that portal key as we just talked about. Deadwood is running towards the top lane right now. So Scout really, really needs to be careful here. <laughs> as far as uh, getting jumped on. And I have a feeling it's coming. <laughs> and actually, Master of Arms also here. So unless they got some great TP support. Oh, Scout's running in right now. He's going to scout it out. So actually, he will get this information here. True to his name. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> So. Cyber Scout collecting information here. Uh, 
I mean, okay, I hope they don't get jumped here because, I mean, he literally just spotted the Deadwood man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's acting like a ward of sight right now. Yeah. They better bring numbers up knowing this is the case. Ooh, he might be able if to pick up. they bring their entire team. Oh, this could go very well for him, man. They got everybody here. Yep, there we go. Deadwood and Master of Arms. And comes the goo oh. right there. Deadwood running away. Pandemonium coming with the Invis, actually. Cheese Helm is the one still staggering behind. Are they going to open it at Deadwood? No. Maybe Hammerstorm, Hammerstorm. There's the flick coming out. Scout opens. The cannonball on top. The silence on top of it. Everything. And down goes Hammerstorm. So at least they do get a pick out of it. And uh, in the meantime, however, TT Esports does at least push the middle tower. So they, they do get an exchange right there and a pretty healthy one, despite Hammerstorm's yeah. death. Yeah, pretty fair. Uh, you know, the Wolves do an excellent job preventing Deadwood initially from portal keying away as well. Mm -hmm. Or portal keying in. Just they had the read on them, so. Yeah, there is a, and again, it, it sounds funny saying this, but there is a lot of scouting tools here on the on the Hellboard side. I mean, between the scout himself and the Vanish, uh, to those Wolves, of course, from Warbeast, especially being level 4. Having that invis themselves. The middle lane still being pushed right here, we see, and it is definitely going to fall. Bobble's actually going to the Master of Arms. The Cuffo coming out. The Song of the Sea. Blade Gunner's nearby. Going to throw out the Contagion. Offensive Master's Call. Oh. Oops, that was a mistake right there. Trying to turn it around. Cannonball, however. The Plague is still passing around. Ophelia's taking so much damage. In comes the Flurry. Not going to kill. Yes, we'll get the kill by Hammerstorm. Now joining the party. Old T4 and Warby still joining the party as well. And Bubbles needing to run. So definitely the misclick on the Master's Call right there. But in the end, 007 does make it a one for one of Master of Arms and, and uh, Ophelia, again, the tower was killed for TT Esports. Uh-oh. Oh, yep. Pandemonium gets caught. Yeah, it looked like that Master's Call got casted effectively. He had a chance of surviving there. I mean, they were sort of out of the... Uh, I mean, maybe not, but they were sort of out of all their nukes there. He was just getting killed by auto attacks there at the end. So I thought there was a chance he'd survive or mm -hmm. maybe a little bigger of a turnaround. Definitely... Uh, not a fortunate circumstance at all, and the bubbles coming back in, they didn't account for, so the, the pandemonium dying in the end just really, really sucks for zero, uh, 007. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. yeah. What's up? Well, cool. I'm just trying to look here. I, okay, they got the two towers down. They're beginning to push top here. Right now, I, I'd expect 007 to want to get top as soon as possible to defend it, but they don't have play rider all the up. Ophelia heals down. I mean, they're just choosing to avoid it across the board. Pandemonium is working on that shrunken head. And again, something else to, to, to note is, is actually the first level is now put into in that battle cry. It's starting to be leveled up here by Warbeast. And especially on a Pandemonium and a Scout for that matter, I mean, that will definitely play a huge role in this game too as it goes on. So, something to keep in mind there. And Warbeast again, he does continue to have that uh, up and up impact. 280 gold per minute now. He's got the Abyssal Skulls, got the Steam Boots. They are down five towers though. <laughs> That's the big difference right here now. Yeah, uh, Scout actually getting level 2 of his electric eye as well. Hmm. More, that's uh, just increases the silence, right? Yeah. As well as yeah. the amount of eyes, of course. But. Oh, and speaking of, Oh, the nice silence right there with the eye. The Demon the Master Call comes out. He gets the invis, and he will survive. Great play right there coming out. The dust is not in time from Aluna. Holy, Holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> Very good eye right there, as we were just talking about it. And that on top of the Master's Call. Easily saving him. Again, they are going to lose their sixth and final outer tower, but, but Scout's staying alive. Oh, what? Picked it off. Does anything fall? <laughs> I don't know what was on it. It was it? something was being delivered, I think. Was oh, being... That's huge if he killed something. I the didn't notice. <laughs> and they got the split push going on. Is he going to die here? Mm, yes, yeah. he will. He can't ulti form. Or he is an ulti form, but yeah, he is an ulti form. Just, I mean, honestly, huh. he could have done a better job. There, he could have been an ulti form initially and let his wolves take the tower, but uh, still, they got a split push and yeah. the, the courier death. That's always, it's always something. Well, again, especially if something was on the courier. That's that's what I'm. I didn't get to catch whether it was on the way there or on the way back. Uh, I have a great. feeling it might have been Hammerstorm's like hammer even for his shrunken head, but I'm not sure. I, I, I can't oh, say for certain. Oh, Ophelia's going to get caught out right here. A scout and Pandemonium. Nice counter, though, from Cheese Summit coming in. Ophelia still well alive. Will she end up falling in the end? There's Ophelia's touch. She is going to end up falling, and Hammerstorm just doesn't have enough damage output. The, even with the minions there, Scout is still nearby, actually. Master of Arms off in the river, but it looks like that will be the finish of that. So at least Ophelia's minions live, too. Um, Hellborn does get another tower kill, by the way. They actually got one from the creeps in the middle lane, so... That actually yeah, uh, is beneficial. Yeah, a lot of nice pickoffs here, I must say. Uh, the, the Tiger Monium's having a fantastic game, <laughs> so uh, clearly the curse did not last. With that flurry leveled up, he's able to take out those creep stacks very, very easily as well. Mm -hmm. And I actually do like leveling up the flurry um, when you're against a solo hero. When you're dual lane versus dual lane, I advocate doing the uh, 
the Cannonball plus Flick secondary. Mm-hmm. But when you are against the solo hero, I mean, he did get Cannonball max out this game, but uh, max out Flurry is a second ability. And I think that's just fine when you're, you know, just sort of in a farm lane. Yeah. Yeah, but once he starts leveling up that Flick, I mean, the minus armor is definitely going to be an impact here. On top of the goo, even, of course, coming out from Master of Arms. And, and again, well, you're, you have a lot of physical damage being pumped out here by the Hellborn team, so... Yeah, uh, the support master also rocking the energizer. <coughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That yeah, that's their true support master of arms. Yeah. Able to get that. That's very good. Yeah. There's still up in experience as well. A little bit lacking in gold, but. Ooh, bottom lane. Deadwood does get the free kill. Wants to get to the play guard, but at one cost right here. Play goes passing around, passes back and forth between the master of arms, trying to finish him off. Doesn't have mana for anything else. Warby's running in though. Warby's with the final auto attack, and Shakul right there will pick up the kill. So, cakes. <laughs> Obviously showing uh, that he was happy. Uh oh, middle right lane. But middle lane, yep, that's we do got that. that's an illusion. Middle lane, the illusion's getting ganked. No, no, Warby's live. They're not even going for it. Oh, God. I think they realize that Warby's just killed yeah, Deadwood bottom. It's like, <laughs> wait a second. This isn't right. There's a wolf on bottom lane. This can't be real. <laughs> Um, yeah, so again, a good counter kill at least. Uh, Plague Rider will definitely sacrifice himself oh, for I Deadwood. I mean, come kill. on, level 11 uh, Deadwood, they don't want to snowball any further for... Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest, Cakes hasn't had the best start this game, so a uh, pick-off on him is really insubstantial. Mm -hmm. uh, to get a free uh, Deadwood kill just to further, further their experience lead, uh, and is compensating for their gold loss a bit as well. I mean, they're down in towers now, I mean, let's look, they... All of their outer towers are down, so... Uh, they only have a lot of room to make up as far as the gold chart goes. Yeah. yeah. Soul's Bulwark on Deadwood. So despite that death, uh, he is, again, continuing to farm very well. He is a top farm. Well, actually, Pandemonium, that's about... And look at that Warbeast, man. 354 gold per minute. So really, Jacole here on Warbeast has really responded nicely. He, too, is working on that shrunken head. I do kind of feel like a Soul's Bulwark here should be, you know, something to be looked at here in the near future, of course, for the Hellborn team, too. And I'm sure we will see it eventually. Uh-oh. Are they? They're not. Okay. Looked like they were yeah. running around for a second, but I'm like, I don't think that was the time to fight. I mean, do they have a bound eye? They do. Leon Black actually has a bound eye now. Yeah. That's big. And oh, Chase, from nice Deadwood. job, there. No. nice job, man, there from Jacole. Uh Likewise, great job stealing the ancients here uh, for the Legion side. But yeah, perceptive enough not to stick around and farm that because that could have been bad. I mean, Deadwood had the read on him, and they're taking out this ward right here. Obviously, figuring they had something if he backed out. Yeah. All right, so more items pick up specifically on the Legion side, actually. I mean, Ophelia's been doing her work. She's still sitting on the red boots, but she's got the Astolay, Ring of Sorcery. She actually has the Helm of the Victim purchase, or the Shaman's Headdress, and eventually Barry Idol being worked on. you got the Tablet route being gone on here by Jeff Inns playing the Bubbles, so figuring the Tablet makes sense here. Shrunken Head's still in the works for Hammerstorm. I, again, I kind of feel, I still feel like something was on that courier for Hammerstorm, maybe, that got destroyed, but... Maybe, yeah. I, you know, I, it, it happened so quick, I yeah. don't know. It... Portal key, I like it on the pandemonium. Yeah, big, big, big. Only thing can really stop him here is a you know punch from Deadwood. So, well, and a skeleton uh, king, I suppose yeah, too. Yep, yeah, but uh, that that face smash will definitely mm. be an impact. Yeah, definitely a lot easier to cancel with the Skeleton King too than say uh, Tempest Elemental Void, which obviously is a giant. AOE well, the other group. thing too. Oh, he's gonna go in right here on a Deadwood. Actually, Deadwood gonna be tabbed though. Guess what? Tabbed command number one counter to pandemonium. As we see right there, so even with that shrunken head portal key, <laughs> tablet away, and just like that, he's fine. I was also going to say, though, and actually, Pandemon needs to be careful. He's going to be caught right here. Red Master's Call going to be coming out, but just too much overwhelming damage. Plague is going to be using minions are here, though, absorbing a lot, I'm sure. Master of Arms going to be gone on. The Scout Silence comes out. Master of Arms will end up falling, though. Scout just running away. Not worth sticking in. He's going to marksman shot onto Ophelia, though. Ophelia's touch overuse. Warby's chasing him down, though. Going to pick up the kill. Gets caught on the rotten grass ball over. they can danger nuke on to dead one. Warby's trying to run away. The armor not going to be enough. P will fall. The shell surfer bubbles just doing it in. The log throw on a scout now. He is being chased down. Power throw hits. Do they want to go further? No, they don't. Dust was applied. It doesn't matter. But a three for one exchange right there coming out in favor of the Legion team. Going to apply some pressure to the base, perhaps. But Pandemonium is up in 20 seconds. Warby's can buy back. He doesn't have ulti form now. They should at least get the tower, most likely. Yeah, I mean. The they were just doing so, so well until that jump. I mean, the Wasted Ultimate, the, oh, they're actually going in. Yeah, Brutalizer just picked up on Scout, by the way. He wants to use that. Look at the new weapon that he has as a result. Marksman shot maybe on a Deadwood? No, he can't get close enough. And Deadwood will be fine in the end. So they can't even take out the tower, and a definitely a uh, solid hold there in the end for 007 at least. And actually, the minions are still here. Oh, Scout might be able to pick them off here. Yep, oh, he's going to get the Skeleton King, and yep, he will definitely pick them off. So... 
Well, started off pretty poor. 007. I mean, still TD Esports coming out on top overall, but again, 007 it seems like they minimized the amount of damage overall. In the end. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, staying, all, staying around a little bit too long. I mean, obviously his teammates were there because they, they tableted him back. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, when your ultimate's down, your shrunken head's down, everything's down, why are you sticking around? They're, they're obviously there. It wasn't yeah. a big surprise. Yeah, that's just getting overzealous for sure. And, but something I was going to mention, though, when you, when you talked about the whole portal key and how his ultimate could still be canceled and everything similar to, like, a Tempest, but he's not by any means as old in as a Tempest at the same time, where, you know, Tempest ulti, that's the big thing. Where Pandemonium, I'm sure, face mash is huge, but again, the flurry, the flick, the cannonball, and just his raw damage output yeah, is very impactful, so... It's not as, you know, all in, in a, in a sense. <clears throat> Coming out. Um, okay, I mean, they're still doing a great job of uh, just farming a lot of the map and keeping their experience up. I mean, the, the split really isn't that bad. Uh, in spite of a little bit of a choked fight there, uh, and Scout's farm being, you know, it's underwhelming for the game, but he's doing what he can, just playing more of a utility role, I suppose, with that silence, and now getting a stun in his Brutalizer. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> I don't think you'd ever expect to see a Brutalizer first scout in a normal game. Yeah, usually maybe that Rune Cleaver or something else, but even the Shrunken Head. But yeah, going to Brutalizer, but it definitely makes sense. I mean, like you said, it's in a sense, he's not playing that hard carry, you know, farm, farm, farm route. He needs to be involved in his fights because of how TD Esports is playing and that he is. Congor is going to easily kill. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. What? What's going on? He's going to be fine. Okay. Okay. Just scaring me here. He's pushing the top tower. I was afraid the TPs were coming right there. I was afraid of a Deadwood jumping in, just blasting him. Gotcha. Uh, luckily, he's fine, but they didn't even get the tower. I mean, they, they were going for that split push, but his wolves were down. Uh, just not able to take it down fast enough while they were running the Congor. Uh -huh. No, Hammerstorm does get the token alive, and again, that's, of course, yeah, absolutely it's not big. the biggest deal, honestly, because okay. I mean, he's going to use his ultimate at the start. True. So he might not have it when he resurrects, but... Uh, you know, again, though, with these shrunken heads, again, Hammerstorm specifically going in that shrunken head, sure, in the end, you know, shrunken head definitely brings it its utility, but I keep going back to just the raw amount of physical damage on this Hellborn team is pretty intense. The Pandemonium, the Scout now even especially, and then, of course, there's always the War Beast. So the shrunken head not necessarily as, you know, crucial in, in a sense. Um, I, I, I do kind of question a little bit, too, the No Souls Bulwark kit on the Hellborn team, actually. It looks like Pandemonium might be going for one now. He is. But it he seems is. like it, it's a very good tool for this team. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, War Beast wants the Shrunken Head as soon as possible. No one's having, like, the best start, so it's not like he was able to yeah. rush a Bulwark this game. Uh, it's just sort of an appropriate timing for it now, I guess. The, the Scout, I mean... Really not doing too bad. I mean, it looks like he's building up a Firebrand now. Um... I, I doubt it would be an Allfire Blade. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> it might be. Would you? Yeah. Is is that that? Would that be that bad? I mean, no I'm sort always... of expecting a Frostburn or Geos here. I mean, Geometers. Okay. I believe it actually works on your Illusions as well. The Disarm, uh, instant first hit as well. Huh. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I didn't expect to see a Brutalizer first on Scout to begin with. Uh, yeah. I understand why he did it in regards to the game. Uh, just figuring he's not going to have that snowball start that he wanted, but. Yeah, I'm going to have to see what Diglett has cooked up here. I mean, you look at the late game and you see a panda. I mean, that hero scales very well. You see a scout. You see a war beast. It's not like they're lacking in late game oh, potential no. here. <laughs> I mean, they're, uh, you almost, I think they're better. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. I mean, better in an even game for sure. And now that they're down, uh, a little bit hard to say how they'll scale while they're down 5,000 gold entering the late True. game. But it definitely feels like if they can hold out, uh, they have a very fair shot at winning. Uh, that being said, getting the jump is just seemingly that much easier with the Legion side, and it's hard for Panda to do his things, for him to do his thing this game. So, you know, it's uh, uh, it looks like uh, Chad is confirming that the courier apparently was going back to base earlier on. By the way, so okay. it, it, yeah, I mean, I tried to click there right away, and I didn't see him picking anything up, and I yeah. didn't see him attacking. So I was like. So just to, to look at that. But also, um, Void Talisman picked up by Deadwood, by the way. Not an item you usually see on him, but again, kind of goes back to this amount of damage here. And also another item that's really good against Pandemonium specifically. So, um, And hell, Warby's for that matter. Middle Tower is going to fall right there in favor of TD Esports. Obviously, uh, 007 didn't really feel that they had the advantage right there to take a fight. So <clears throat> just didn't ultimately let the tower fall. Yeah, I mean, they want the token to drop more than anything, too, in 3 minutes and 40 seconds. 
barrier idol now finished by Ophelia. They're going to be looking to uh, apply that pressure, so it's going to be all coming down to their standoff in the base. Yeah. What or you... can they find a window to pull off a gank? Yeah, they're going in the middle. Pandemonium running up. Now Pandemonium needs to be a little bit careful himself, but I guess they do. 007 has a numbers advantage here, so <clears throat> yeah, he feels uh, comfortable I mean, using that portal key. Aluna was not nearby at that moment, so actually, actually no, she was, she was. I was saying their tablet. Oh, they're here. going, they're oh. going. Energizer used right there. They want to go. Uh, no, just not in time. Not Aluna Bubbles, I meant, was not nearby. And he's the one that has that tablet, so if he did want to go, uh, he might have been able to pull it off, but still. Yeah, how about Bubbles, by the way? The Hellflower now finished on him. That's huge. Yeah. Um, what do you make of that Void Talisman pickup, though, that I mentioned? On uh, Deadwood? It's it's just situational to kite the Deadwood, kite the Pan. I mean, look at all their damage output. It is. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Most of it's coming from a physical source. It's just there to... Oh, uh, Pandemonium making some big reaction plays right there. First the Portal Key against Deadwood, and then the Shrunken Head against Hammerstorm. Mm -hmm. As he tried to uh, hammer in. Look what that does. Yep. The, the Shrunken Head's down, unfortunately, so... <laughs> Despite a getaway, it's still now a little bit good pressure that TD Esports is going to try to take advantage of. There's a barrier idol that you mentioned, so into the base we go. Will the Hellborn team look to try to ultimately defend this? You got Warbeast in the front line, Scout kind of charging in there. Again, he knows they have a bow and dive, obviously, so not going to go reckless. By any means, there's a flick on a dead with a cannonball on top of the hammer store with a counter jump that on a Scout. Scout dropping fast. Scout will end up falling. The flurry coming up from Pandemonium. That play is bouncing around while Pandemonium is going to end up falling. Warby's in the background. He's trying to nom 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 onto Bubbles right there, but just not going to happen. He has to run away with that shortcut head still up. The melee racks falls. The ranged racks going down. But they did get the bottom tower killed in favor of the Hellborn team at least, so they get something out of this. But again, the racks are going to fall. And now TT Esports, they, they're definitely going to continue. Now, Scout does have a buyback. Pandemonium does not, it looks like. So we'll see if they still want to try to hold this off here. Um, at least the melee racks, perhaps. I mean, the tower is one thing. But, ooh, the stun out of the Deadwood? Not going to follow that. Yeah, all their damage is pointing click. And in these massive team fights, they just seem overwhelmed at this point. It's just... Oh, Master of Arms going to be charged. Yeah, Scout not buying back here. I really think, I mean, again, it might not have mattered in the end, but... At least a threat could have scared TD Esports. The melee racks has fallen though. He's going to be up in two seconds. He is up now. Uh, you do have Warby's falling back. Uh, no ulti form. In fact, well, there you go. He actually does activate it right there. He's going to get stunned on no shortcut head. Scout running in, but there's the void talisman on it. Dead with a beautiful hammerstorm stun, and TT Esports will be happy with retreating in the end. They got what they came for big time, and 007 now much much further behind. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit unfortunate. Scout sitting at 1,800 gold. I mean, we just saw right there, all they had to do was pretty much walk up, knock on the door of the base, and once they were all together, they just couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, Shrunken Head was down. Yes, Master of Arms ulti was down, but I don't even think uh, with those factors in play, it would have changed things. Yeah. True. Would have been nice, though, to have. <laughs> That's for sure. For, uh, for uh, We Are Spies, but... Oh, yeah. They did not, and, you know, that's a definitely even why TD Esports pushed into the base right there appropriately and uh, got, uh, did the damage. Like I said, they took out completely everything in the middle, basically, except the meatball. <coughs> in the bottom lane, they got the melee racks and everything else. So, yeah, the base is definitely cleared out quite a bit now in favor of uh, 007. So, or, excuse me, in favor of TD Esports. But for 007, you know, still sticking in there. I mean, so despite that, 31 and a half minutes in, it's not it's not too overwhelming in the team stats, at least. I mean, the, the experience is now in favor of TD Esports, but it's still very minimal. And then you have the gold. It's about a 10,000 goalie. Definitely impactful, but there's there's yeah, there's still hope for uh, 007. And Sanitarius on Hammerstorm. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's not the most impactful amount, but look, the team fight composition uh, for Legion, that much better. Yeah, they have some nice late game heroes in Hellborn, but how they all mash, it, I mean, just just look at it. Look at the AoE stuns, look at the lockdown, look at the burst. I mean, they got everything there utility-wise uh, on the Legion side, so they don't really have that same composition here on Hellborn. And then on top of that, there's two melee racks down. Oh, nope. not a port keys being used. Flick right there. Ophelia going to be caught on the plague. Who's even coming out right there. Bass between the minion and her. And Ophelia will just get absolutely wrecked. As Scott also jumped in. The rotten grass pitting Pandemonium. However, the Falcon Punch comes out. And Pandemonium just melts away on top of play. Good. Our 007's had enough. They're going to call the GG's. And TT Esports will take the first game here in this best at a three. So... I mean, I'll tell you, it, that was an entertaining game, at least in my opinion. I mean, we had some fun picks right there, if that's for sure. And, and ultimately, you know, we got to see something out of them. But the eSports, they did have the more sound lineup, and uh, they capitalized off of that big time, it seemed like. So 
The start was struggling uh, for 007. Yeah, they did. Giving up that Deadwood first pick, uh, I, I didn't get. I, I would need to go back and check all of the bands to see if there's anything I feel like they could have yeah. just sort of, you know, left alone. But I feel like that Deadwood did so much work again that game. It absolutely annihilated the Plague Rider and the Suicide. And Plague Rider, normally a very sound Suicide lane, especially mm -hmm. versus a lot of 1v1 matchups. True, they didn't have the Ophelia support, and true, uh, perhaps the item build could have been optimized. And, you know, not take away, Moravis did play the lane very, very well, but it. I just don't know about giving that up. It yeah. <laughs> seemed like it did a lot more harm than good. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, that's how it played out in the end. And TTE Sports, of course, gladly and deservingly taking a victory there in game number one. Will we are spies? You know, bust out something else here in game two and uh, maybe make that comeback for us the third game. Or will TTE Sports sweep it up here? Moving on to the next round in the loser's bracket. We're going to take a short break as always, but stay tuned. Game two coming up. 007 taking on TTE Sports. We'll be right back. <laughs>